okay so today we will be starting uh, our next chapter that is the from the honeydew only you come to the next chapter that is the tsunami i hope the ant and the cricket we have completed am i right okay so we are starting the next chapter that is the tsunami page number 24 So tsunami, as you all know, tsunami is the natural disaster, is one of the natural disaster, which is very bad, yet another very bad natural disaster. And it is, ha it normally happens because of a underground movement of the earth, an underground earthquake, okay, which is, uh, uh, which is formed under the seabed. And because of that, the sea gets into motion and the sea just becomes a huge giant waves and it just comes and attacks over the land as in the form of a huge wave so already we uh, have heard of such a tsunami in our recent years that is 2004 so one very huge and terrible tsunami that hit in the southeast asian uh, countries also some part of india was also affected by that so we are going to see some of the small portion of uh, fact related to that tsunami in different parts of different countries. So first you see Kachal. Okay, first giving a description of the Andaman and Nicobar Island. So there is an island named Kachal. It is an island. It is part of the Andaman group of islands. Nankauri is an island in the Nicobar group. So Nankauri is another, which is one of the island of the Nicobar group of island. Kachali and Nankauri are more than a hundred miles apart. So this, both these islands, they are really very far from each other. They are not close by. Hmm. Why they are very, uh, why it is being mentioned that they are very far apart? Because in both the island, we will see the effect of tsunami. Okay, and both the effects were huge. It's not like that the Kachal was near or that was near, nothing like that. Whatever it is, when the tsunami is happening all over the Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean, okay, the effect is coming in a huge, in a huge way on over, on, over a large, vast area. Okay, now the Andaman and Nicobar Island are to the west of India, the Nicobar Islands are to the north of Andaban Islands. Okay, so this is the basic information. Now coming to the text. A tsunami is a very large and powerful wave caused by, caused by the earthquakes under the sea. On 26 December 2004, a tsunami hit Thailand and parts of India such as the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Tamil Nadu coast. Here are some stories of courage and survival so you can mark this portion regarding the definitions definition of tsunami that is if any question comes like what is tsunami then you can quote from here that tsunami is what it is a big a very large and powerful wave and this wave is caused by the earthquake under the sea okay under the sea there is a land so any kind of earthquake happening on that land is causing into the rise of such a large and powerful wave and such a tsunami happened on 26 December, just the next day of Christmas, 26 December 2004. So we are dealing with all the dates nearby Christmas. The first chapter also dealing with Christmas. This also almost the next day of Christmas. A tsunami hit Thailand. So the tsunami happened on Thailand and also some parts of India such as the Andaman and Nicobar Island and Tamil Nadu coast. So here are some of the instances, some of the stories. Okay, stories of survival and some tragic deaths. Okay, whatever uh, happened during that time. So all these stories are true. It is not fictional. It is not imaginary. These are all true facts. These stories are from the Andaman and Nicobar Archipelago. Archipelago, what is an archipelago? It is a group of islands. Okay. Um, 
I'm getting your messages right now. So some of you are asking me about the syllabus. Okay, right now you can't uh, know the syllabus. Syllabus will be will be declared to you in some in some days. So you have to wait for the syllabus. And is my sound still low? Okay. I hope there is no other problem with my sound. Okay. So I was in the text. I was talking about the archipelago. So archipelago, these are a group of island is called archipelago. So the effect of tsunami that happened on Andaban and Nicobar Island. One such story. Ignatius was the manager of a cooperative society in Kachal. So a person, his name was Ignatius. He was the manager of a cooperative society. His wife woke him up at 6 a.m. because she felt an earthquake. Normally, it was early in the morning. The wife felt some kind of shaking, some kind of movement. So he just went hurriedly and woke him up. Igneous carefully took his television set off its table and put it down on the ground so that it would not fall and break. So the first thing that he thought to do, as because whenever any earthquake is happening, things move. And if anything is kept on the top place, eh, there is a possibility that it may it may fall down and may break so in order for safety reason he just put his television because maybe the television was one of his very favorite and important thing so he just put his television on the ground so that it will not drop out from the table but he had no idea this is not going to just save the television he need to save their lives you need to they need to run for their own lives television is nothing in compared to that he had no idea then the family rushed out of the house and then as a safety measure which we are all told every time whenever there is an earthquake we must go out of home we must not remain indoors we must go in some empty places this is recommended every time because we don't know how much is the earthquake how, what is the frequency of that earthquake maybe that is a slight earthquake maybe that is a huge earthquake whatever it is we never know so it is for the safety reason that they also went out of the home with that slight movement only. When the tremor stopped, they saw the sea rising. Now, they, it was a very light earthquake for them. So it stopped. Okay. And then finally, suddenly, in horror, they saw that the sea is rising. The sea level is rising. When the tremor stopped, they saw the sea rising. In the chaos and confusion, two of his children caught hold of of the hands of their mother's and uh, mother's brother and rushed in the opposite direction so it was a panicking situation because they are watching a very large huge huge size of wave was approaching towards them okay coming towards them so they were all terrified so there was huge panic and screams and confusion what to do where to go okay because that is what human crisis is supposed to be. And please someone mute your microphone. I'm getting some background voices. Remember, whenever you are attending the classes of any such uh, from the school, you need to, I should not keep on telling it several times. You need to mute your microphone. Okay. I'm still getting some sounds. I don't know who is it. Rohan Roy from the Panja. Okay. So, so there was a big panic and a panicking situation and confusion. So, what happened? Ignatius is having two children. So, his two children hold the hands of their mother's father, means their grandfather. Uh, and their mother's brother means uncle. So holding the hands of their grandfather and uncle, they were like running in the opposite direction. From which direction the wave was coming, they were running in that opposite direction. He never saw them again. So that was the last time that they that Ignea saw the children and the relative, the grandfather and the brother-in-law. After that, he never saw them. His wife was also swept away. Why he did not saw them? Because uh, why he did not see them? Because they were dead they were they were like uh, flushed out with that wave his wife also swept away only the 
three other children who came with him were saved so only three other children that igneous has had who were who were with igneous at that time they were lucky enough they were fortunate enough they got saved other in the entire family the maximum part of his family all the family members are dead by that time sanjeev so that was the first story next is the story of sanjeev so sanjeev was a policeman serving in kachal island of the nicobar group of island he somehow managed to save himself his wife and his baby daughter from the waves so he was rescuing himself and his family from the wave and somehow he was successful in saving three of them his wife and his baby daughter from the waves but then he heard the cries for help from the wife of john so who was john the guest house cook so he so he heard the Uh, help cries of an, another woman so this woman was the wife of john and john was his cook the not his cook the guest house cook the cook for the guest house and sanjeev as because he was a police officer it was his duty to save the people in need so he jumped into the water to rescue her but they were both swept away but he also died along with that other woman whom he tried to save so like he sacrificed his life okay in order to do his duty as a policeman he perhaps sacrificed his life but it was not his in his luck to survive so he could not survive that was another story the third story 13 year old megna was swept away along with her parents and 7 77 other people she spent two days floating in the sea now this story of megna this is another story of survival she along with her entire family along with 70 other people were swept in the same time but she was alive okay she was floating she was floating on the sea for two days being alive she was floating it was her luck that she did not die then she was floating on the sea holding to a wooden door 11 times she saw relief helicopters overhead so she somehow got hold of some wooden piece wooden door and uh, uh, rohan please do not record the call your class is being recorded already stop recording stop recording the call without my permission you are not supposed to record any call or take any kind of snapshot remember that always and delete this call whatever you have recorded okay okay so this megna she was floating on the sea for two days and after that what happened uh she while she was floating over the see she saw helicopters the rescue helicopters the relief helicopters 11 times but they missed to see her so she kept on floating for two days unfortunately she was brought to the shore by a wave and was found walking on the seashore in days so the relief helicopters were not able to spot her not able to save her but nature it, it can be called like nature thought to keep her alive so nature only saved her how she got saved naturally by floating only some one day she just came and she was uh, she was just left over on the shore by the sea waves the same waves that took her that swept her away and with her entire family that same wave came and gave him gave her back to the land so she was just naturally rescued she was saved and when she was finally um, saved by the people they said that she looked very utterly confused days means utterly confused she don't know what is going on what happened like she was in tremendous trauma at that time normally if you keep yourself in that condition in that position how would you feel okay it was an abnormal situation so that was the third story the fourth story is of almas javed was 10 years old she was a student of carmel convent in port blair where her father had a, na- a petrol pump her mother rahila's home was in nankauri island the family had gone there to celebrate christmas so this 
Almas Javed. She was just 10 years old and she was a student studying in the Carmel Convent in Fort Blair. Fort Blair is in Andaban. It is the capital of Andaban. So there her father was having a petrol pump. Means her father's home is in Fort Blair. And her mother's home was in Nankauri Island. Nankauri means in the Nicobar portion of the island. Okay, in the Nankauri Island. And at that time, on that day, she was actually in her maternal, uh, maternal uncle's home. Means in her mother's home. The family gone there to celebrate Christmas as because the previous day was Christmas 25th December. So they went there, they gathered there to celebrate, to have a kind of Christmas party with the family. When the tremors came early in the morning, the family was sleeping. Everyone was sleeping when the earthquake was happening. Alma's father saw the sea water recede. So it was first noticed by Alma's father. So he saw that somehow the sea was going back. He understood that the water would, uh, that the water would come rushing back with great force. So the water was receding, going away. That means very soon the water will be coming with tremendous force, coming back with tremendous force. He woke everyone up. He understood the situation and he immediately woke everyone up, tried to rush them to a safer place, okay, telling them just go to some safe place. As they ran, her grandfather was hit on the head by something and he fell down. Her father rushed to help him. Then came the first giant wave that swept both of them away. So, unluckily, unfortunately, the uh, the grandfather got hit in on the head and he fell down. He was lagging behind. So in order to help the grandfather, the father went to help the grandfather. And at that moment only the big wave came and swept both of them away. So it the all these incidents, as I'm telling, if you can understand, it feels like you're watching some kind of movie. Okay, in movies only this kind of things happen. Some are lucky, some are unlucky. And they are just getting... Uh, like caught in this wave just because of just few moments just for few moments sake but these are not movie these are not stories these are the real facts that happened Alma's mother and aunts uh, stood clinging to the leaves of a coconut tree calling out to her so now her mother and her aunts they were actually holding tightly to one coconut tree to the leaves of some coconut tree and calling out to her that come here come here but what happened a wave uprooted the tree so they were thinking that they can survive by clinging tightly to the tree but what happened the wave was so strong okay you can imagine the strength of the wave the wave was so strong that it uprooted the entire coconut tree a wave uprooted the tree and they too were washed away Alma saw a log of wood floating. She climbed onto it. Then she fainted. When she woke up, she was in hospital in uh, Kamorta. From there, she was brought to Port Blair. The little girl does not want to talk about the incident with anyone. She is still traumatized. So Alma's in just in few minutes, it is just it just happened in few minutes that her entire family was carried away in the wave and the entire family died in front of her eyes and she remained alive she did not die she was again fortunate another one who survived and she also clinged to some uh, log of wood and she also somehow uh, survived that terrible waves and uh, when she was brought into port blair in a hospital okay i mean after getting wake up in a hospital in Kamorta. She was then brought back to Port Blair. Okay, now, because Port Blair was her original home, uh, so when the interview people, they came to interview her about her experience and all, so she refused to say anything because she was in a big shock, in a terrible shock. She was traumatized. She was scared. She don't. She just refused to remember anything about that incident, whatever happened. Okay. So I will end my class here today because the time of the class is over and you will be having you in another class shortly. And after I disconnect the call, you uh, put your name and give your attendance. Okay, I will note it down. All right, then I will continue this class next day. Bye-bye. Okay.
and stay safe.